This is the way. This is the way. All right, welcome back, everybody, to Father Lou Phantom. Here we're doing the after watch party reaction and initial review. I'm joined again by Mr. Doug here from Not Your Status Quo. How you doing, Doug? Ooh, I am great. Wow. Uh, that was something that took uh, that took a lot out of me a bit there. Right? And like I was saying, like this, <laughs> I, the name of this episode to me could be not what I not expected. Not what I thought. <laughs> not what I expected. Yeah, not yep. what I thought. But I very much enjoyed that. So Yes. Yeah. Dreams and Madness. Part 7 of Ahsoka. Directed mm -hmm. by uh, Gita Patel. So written by Dave Filoni. I gotta say, I really... I'm starting to really like Ezra a lot. Like, I, he was very endearing to me this episode. What do you think, Doug? Yes, but I'm concerned about him. Oh. You think uh, he's gonna die? I'm, I'm <laughs> wondering, is the dreams and madness, is yeah. the madness referring oh, yeah. to Ezra? Him? <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you think he's actually crazy? Uh, cray, cray? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I, I don't know. I think he's been alone for so long. I think he might be starting mm -hmm. to lose it a bit. Interesting. I kind of like that. I, I like the fact that he feels like he doesn't need a weapon anymore. That's kind of like more Jedi That's, than That is anybody. definitely super Jedi. Yeah, I He's, really like that. He was like, I, uh, I, that. I will not attack. I will defend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just, I get a bad feeling every time he says, oh, I feel like I'm going home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely going home. We're going home. <laughs> this is going to be great, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There's the ship that's going to take me home. All right. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> or am I? <laughs> um, so I'll tell you all right now. I'm going to make this prediction for next week's episode. They are make not it? getting home. <laughs> and, and will Ezra actually make it out of this series? Who knows? Uh, I'm a little concerned at this that. point. I know. Right? Um, if he Ooh. if he does bite it, is that going to be a catalyst for uh, for Sabine? Oh my gosh! And you can already tell, like at least with that last fight, she is she's very aggressive in her oh, fight yeah. too. And it's like the act opposite of what is she's Ahsoka opposite of Ezra right now. Yeah, so it's, it's very interesting to see what, what's going to happen with that. I was really curious because like Bale and Skull, you know, is is now going off on his own. You know, this little quest to that he's do doing. what. Do what? Like where? Yeah, what is he doing? And apparently, he's never coming back to Shin. So he, right, he must these are my parting his... words. Yeah, I was like, really? <laughs> okay. I mean, and I understand. Like he he's seeing all this ambition in his his apprentice there. Ooh, Boba T. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. And uh, you know, he he sees that she is you know more aggressive and she wants to have power and all these things that he has been talking about. That he's like. That's all fleeting. I'm trying to do something else. So he's just letting her go off and do her own thing. So it's like, mm, I'm still really curious what that's going to be. And man, I really hope it's probably not going to be. But I hope that next week's episode is like two hours long because we need some answers. And I don't think we're going to get them in 30 minutes. No. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Crazy. that would uh, that would definitely be ideal if they did if they gave us more time, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't know. I don't know either. Jorge Aguilar, mm. good to have you back on the chat. You were here last week, so appreciate you coming in here for Fatherly Fandom. Thank you for joining. Just finished the episode. So did we. We just finished it. Got up the wash party all done here. So we're talking about the episode here on air. Um, yeah, but like you were saying, Thrawn is awesome. Uh, Lars oh. Nicholson is doing a phenomenal job with the character. I'm, I'm loving every moment that he's in. And he's showing off what a brilliant tactician he is. And the whole time I'm like, right? and I was a little worried too at the beginning of this episode because he was sending out all those troops. And I'm like, would Thrawn really do that? Because all he wants to do is load up the cargo and get mm, out of there. But get he out made there. note of that at the end. He's like, hey, you know, we lost this battle, but they're losing the battle for time. We're almost done. And that was, oh my God, that line, the way that he said it. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, one might see it as a loss for Ahsoka Tano. <laughs> I'm like, in fact, oh my God, dude. <laughs> Shivers. <laughs> Perhaps. 
Perhaps not. <laughs> I'm trying to work on my my Thrawn voice and like you know in the audio book I think it's not Lars Mikkelsen but the guy that they have doing the voice is very similar to that too so it's got hmm. that same sort of inflection Mithron Yeroto <laughs> and so I I yeah I love I love Lars Mikkelsen's voice it's so unique and it's like almost otherworldly which is really cool it's not a, it, it feels like a a combination of different dialects you can't really pin you know where it's from and whatnot so that's what i like the most about that's the why i have so much respect for uh actual voice actors the people that yeah that's like their job the people that they yeah. they have a certain way of um creating certain voices depending on the type of character and when you hear them speak normally versus some sort of character voice that they're putting on you can tell there is a difference they're not just yeah it's not just their voice so they're you know they're putting some effort into it and i have a feeling that's what he's doing i think so too and you know i think uh, some people might think that um lars is playing this a little stiff but um knowing thrawn in his character that is that's true to form when it comes to what he is playing with that character he's very calm cool calculating as he is so he's he's not going to show you a lot of emotion so the performance that Lars Mikkelsen is giving when it comes to Thrawn is very accurate to what the character would be like you know he's not gonna he's not gonna get super mad he's just gonna stand mm -hmm. there and ponder and think it through and be like well you know we did lose this but uh we actually won <laughs> it's all good guys it's all good here <laughs> um attack on show says that episode was only so so for me you know yeah it wasn't uh it wasn't part f <clears throat> you know part five but no. i did love that we got more anakin too in the beginning and that we have those recorded tapes i hope we see more of them you know anything. i think the main issue that i feel with this i almost feel like this show was intended to be binge watched yeah because the episodes don't feel like they're starting and ending. They feel like they're just a piece of a larger part. Yeah. So it, it you you do feel like like this episode definitely at least for me. Uh, I almost felt like we kind of dropped in w exactly right where we left off. We told right. just another little bit of the story, and then they cut us off. They cut it off again. Yeah, it's, it's like I we, we that... got to the end of the, the the audio tape and we got to turn it over to the other side. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. But yeah, I agree, and I think that Dave Filoni—that's intentional. Like Dave Filoni mm -hmm. is meaning this to be one thing that you watch, one story that you watch, if not one giant story, um, one giant movie that we're supposed to be experiencing. Yeah. Which I love. I I love that we're not getting any filler or anything like that. Oh so. yeah. It's really good. Okay, we got uh, Travis Robinson. Hey, nice to see you, Travis. He's an old buddy of mine. Mark Thompson does the unabridged nice. audiobook. Uh, thanks for that. Yeah, I know it was somebody else. Mark Thompson does that, and he does a phenomenal job with that in the audiobooks for Thrawn. <laughs> I like Tack on Show. The Battle of the Bastards in Game of Thrones. Yeah, very similar. We needed that one moment with, with somebody pulling out their lightsaber against all the horses and everything coming up. <laughs> you know? I get that. It felt very Game of Thronesy to me. It felt very Lord of the Rings to me this episode. Mm -hmm. Everybody was riding on uh, dog back. On, yep, yep. On howler back, I guess, it, as it were. And, so. and the way that Balin fights, it's so much like uh, a medieval knight. Yeah. I love that. And that fight with him and Ahsoka, chef's kiss. Perfect. Oh, okay. I thought for a minute. The minute I heard that piano sting, I was just like, oh, no, what is he going to do? That was not what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> no. So Attack on Show says this this was just another episode that really not much happened other than Ahsoka uh connecting with Ezra. Yeah, and um yeah, it you know, it's like we were saying, this is I think it fleshed out Thrawn's story. character. I think that's what it was good for. If you don't it, know who he is, yeah, you haven't inter you haven't watched Rebels, you you don't you haven't read the books, this is a good way to get to know who Thrawn is. So I will say the episode did that. I, I think you're right. You're right, Doug, because I think that this episode really does show more of the reason why he's a great, great threat to these mm -hmm. people. Um, and so if you haven't seen any of the other material, this highlights that. And I think, you know, Dave Filoni is doing a good job of walking that line between fan service as well as being accessible to the general audience. So I think that they are doing a good yep. job. And this, this definitely 
highlights that and yeah i liked it i liked the, the things that were going on attack on shows us if we had more than one to go it wouldn't be such an issue but knowing there's only one more to go makes this season start to feel like there's <sighs> something off oof mm, could be uh, like next week we'll find out if if they're able to pull it off and i i'm under the impression that you know we are probably going to get another season of this as well so at this point um I'm, I'm willing to see where this goes and everything. I know we only have one episode left. This was the penultimate episode. And it's always hard at this point because it's like, well, there's not a whole lot of stage setting that we can do now. So we need to get to the end game, whatever that end game is. So mm. how they conclude this season will really play off whether or not um, I think that they're being successful with this story. Uh, but so far, I very much, I, I, I'm enjoying it much better than Obi-Wan Kenobi or Book of Boba Fett, you know, I think that it's a, a far superior oh. Star Wars. Than those um, overall, yes. Mm -hmm. Overall, I'm definitely enjoying it way more than Obi-Wan and uh, and uh, Book of Boba Fett. Um, obviously, Obi-Wan and Book of Boba Fett, Boba uh, Obi-Wan and Book of Boba Fett, they had their individual episodes and scenes that were pretty good. Yeah, but overall, they had good highlights. Yeah. Yes, Th yes, that, that's mm -hmm. I love that. They had good highlight reels. <laughs> they did excellent highlight reels. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, overall, I've really been enjoying Ahsoka. There's so much to love about it. Yeah, I agree. I, it that almost makes me feel the way that I felt when I watched the first season of The Mandalorian. I fell in love with that show. Uh, oh, true. And this does. It feels like falling in love with this. Every little thing that we mm -hmm. get, you know, getting C-3PO back, I thought that would be more fan servicey, and I would be eye-rolling. Like, all the things that I would imagine, if you would have told me, oh, C-3PO's coming back. Oh, this is happening. This, this is happening. I'd be like, oh, that's just going to be so cheesy and cringeworthy. Mm -hmm. But somehow, Dave Filoni is pulling it off, and I, is seeing... How they utilize C-3PO and how they utilize bringing Leia into the story without showing her was Thank perfect. you for that. I Thank really, you. really appreciated that. I love that. That was so I, nice. I guarantee there was some Disney executive that was just like, uh, hey, you know what? Don't even worry about it. We've got the best CG artists in town. We've got AI voice recordings. And Dave Filoni is probably just like, no, mm-mm. No, yeah. <laughs> we are not doing that. You are not going to put some CG ghost monster of Leia on this screen. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for you. doing that. And it was perfect. We got a little bit of the Leia theme in there, too, when C3PO mm -hmm. was there. It was great. Attack on Show says, This is what I was referencing when I said, Think of Battle of the Bastards and Game of Thrones. My comments got mixed. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, Travis says, I think the show is leading towards the Filoni movie. Yep, yeah, you're, it is. Uh, Thrawn returns, and then the climactic battle is in the movie. I agree. Yeah. I think all roads are leading, at least with uh, the things in the Mandalorian time frame, all roads are leading to that Dave Filoni movie. And they've said this before, that it's going to culminate that, that entire story with this movie. And again, give us three movies. Make this a freaking trilogy for mm -hmm. the Filoni trilogy in the middle. I would love that. Thank oh. you, Travis, for that. They do. They really do need to give him uh, his own trilogy. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, instead of just, okay, we'll take one movie from this, this time frame, one movie from this time, one movie from that time frame. Dave Filoni, you got the trilogy. Yeah. Make it a cohesive trilogy. Make it one story. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. don't change Plan it. Plan it out. Yeah. Here's a thought. <laughs> Don't Plan let, it out. Don't let <laughs> you know? George Lucas near any of the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You can take his story ideas. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, have him write come. It. Let, let him, you know, come up with some of the planets. Let him, let him name a few of the characters. <laughs> yeah. Gr Gringle Moon Killer. Perfect. I love it, George. That was great. <laughs> yeah. And the one thing that this is showing me, too, is that Dave Filoni and his writing, he was the perfect person to, to mm. take over all of this stuff and it's just like we we got all the the amazing brilliancy and creativity from george lucas but we now also have the writing skills necessary yes. to bring these things to life yes. in a meaningful way that's entertaining and deep at the same time it's and like the perfect fusion awesome. It really is. Like, he is George Lucas 2.0. Like, this is this is everything we ever wanted. And, uh -huh. like, it's so it's so perfect. He is the perfect apprentice. 
You know, and every Batmaster wants to see <clears throat> themselves surpassed. And the apprentice lives. <laughs> mm -hmm. he, he does indeed. And and Dave Filoni, you are doing the Lord's work, man. I mean, oh, jeez. I don't you have pulled off the impossible. Him, John Favreau, you guys are just yeah. Mm. You you brought us back from the brink. I'm gonna say it now. It's so nice and it's just so fun to be this excited about Star Wars again. And to <laughs> right. talk about it. And to have mystery and to not where, know where this is going too, which is which is great. Except for we know Ezra Bridger is going to die, so that's, that's definitely going to happen. No, right? no, he's going home, Chris. He he's said totally so. Totally going home. I know. He's on his way home. Mm -hmm. I'm and, just uh, the, the, the next episode. All right, I'm going to take one more step, and I'm going to be on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> And he just suddenly explodes out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? no, what? watch it be what? something even more anticlimactic. Oh, I have space cancer. Oh yeah, space cancer. <laughs> That's what we need in Star Wars. We need more right. space cancer <laughs> in Star Wars. Oh, no. That's why he's going crazy. Uh, the the, yeah, yeah, there you go. Is so it's a parasite that he's got there. Yeah, yeah. that he got from oh, like that he got from the space whales. Mm. Yeah. It's a whole new galaxy too, so yeah. all the viruses and yeah, parasites. Yeah, he didn't get vaccinated before he got here. Mm. Come on, Ezra. You know, Man, I don't want to be like that. I mean, before I deployed, they uh, <laughs> they they pumped me full of all sorts of stuff that I didn't even think oh, I needed anymore. You and me both, brother. <laughs> even <laughs> in the buttocks, <laughs> to get that yes. one too. Yes. They had us oh. bend over. It was like, yep. and you didn't know when it was coming either. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this is crazy. <laughs> Uh, fun times. Oh, uh, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> yes, cheers to that. <laughs> Two veterans here. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but Doug is a veteran, and I am also a veteran, so we both served. So, just just so you know, we weren't just getting shots out of nowhere <laughs> for the fun of it. We were actually. Oh, saving. you mean you guys don't don't just go to the local shot shop? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the time to get a shot. In Load the me up with smallpox. I need my fix. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, so this Top episode... Top it off with the measles. <laughs> and getting, like, the the tribunal or, or the whatever that was at the beginning... I figured that was going to happen, yeah. but again, not what I expected. Not what... I, I really thought we were going to get it that last episode. I thought they were going to fake us out and <laughs> let us, like, simmer yeah. with where they were going to Peridia mm -hmm. and focus in on this. So it was interesting having that in the beginning. I, I, and I commented on the watch party. I love the fact that they actually change clothes for once. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, they're, you're it's not, not a cartoon anymore. <laughs> the same thing all the time. So yeah, all the characters are now really into beige. <laughs> so they're wearing yeah. beige coats and everything like that. So, oh, no, do it, do it in uh, the Valley Girl uh, Thrawn. Beige is in. <laughs> beige is totally in. <laughs> the Valley Girl Thrawn would totally be about that. He's like, I think I'm gonna do my my next uniform in beige because that's all the trend, Brenda. <laughs> like, oh my God, like, orange yeah. was last season. <laughs> okay, and then we gotta talk about. Oh, what's that? Uh, I forget his name, but that senator, man, he is just really getting his comeuppance in this too. Is he is he secretly um uh with the empire? I I would imagine like he's probably like. He's got to be. Like, I, I know uh, they kind of uh, re they they sort of dropped a hint that he he was one of those that sort of sat on the sidelines and waited to see yeah. who would win. They said that in uh, what the first or second episode. Yeah, he sat out. Yeah, I think it was yeah. the second episode. So the, Hamato... I think it was here. Like, did you even fight in the war? No, you were one of yeah, those that sat on the sides to wait and see mm -hmm. who would win. Yeah, he was Hamato Ziono, and he's from yeah. Hosnian Prime. Oof. Yeah. So Oof. he's a senator from, from over there. Yeah, and I think eventually, let's see here. Um, what? And I think eventually he does try to become chancellor. Oh. I'm just reading up real quick on this. I mean, that would certainly explain a lot about the New Republic mm -hmm. if he did end up continuing on not only as a senator, but attempted to become chancellor or did become chancellor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it would explain an awful lot. Yeah, he definitely has his eye on that seat. <clears throat> and, you know, 
we got you know mon mothma back again just like just tired as hell you know mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like oh i just gotta deal with all this stuff and she's like oh hera come on you I know, know what this, this i <laughs> what i do not understand about the new republic and or maybe it's just to this guy but it kind of seems like a lot of them mm -hmm. what i don't get is this is the, the the star wars galaxy and they have a lot of wars yeah. like a lot of them a there's lot. always some sort of war in the stars mm -hmm. you'd think they would have an understanding that one big battle doesn't mean that it's the end like there's still going to be little yeah. pockets of of resistance here and there like you'd think they know that yeah balin knows that he, he mm -hmm. knows all about the cycle but and the other thing too is like ziolo saying that it was like oh you know these jedi out there and these space whales it's like dude like the, uh, a major should be normal Sith for you ran the galaxy right? just a few years ago come on darth vader you... was running around choking people through monitors how do you what do you do you think like the average person maybe missed out on that like do, do you think maybe Probably. most folks didn't even know what like sith yeah. i okay look through the dictionary i don't like, even know what, what that is what, what? Is that? <laughs> yeah yeah, and good point, Doug. You know, that probably is the situation because, like, you know, people heard stories about Luke Skywalker. It's like, oh, he says he was a Jedi and he took down all these things, but they're not actually seeing it in real life and, and seeing it up close. So, yeah, I'll give you that. So that could I, definitely I will, be a possibility. The only reason why I say that is I always think back to Episode 4 with Han. Oh, that hokey religion? <laughs> yeah, true. And that's how it was originally set up like that. It's like, oh, you know, that's all mystical fairy tales from the mm -hmm. past like that that didn't actually happen that way and that was half the fun of mm -hmm. star wars too is be like no there's magic does exist you know the no, no. Does there exist. really are space wizards man yeah <laughs> so i do like that element in the story so yeah i guess yeah. i can see that so but that guy i just don't like him ah. no neither do i not a fan no. not a fan but yeah, I did like how they brought in C-3PO, like I was saying, and everything, and how they utilize Leia, and mm -hmm. uh, it makes sense. And and it sets up her role in the Resistance for the sequels that we don't talk about, but we talk about all the time here on, yeah. on Fatherly Phantom and Not Your Sad School. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so she's now ahead of the defense fleet or whatnot, the senator that's in charge of that committee, I guess, is what they set up there. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh makes sense okay so she's taking on that role and that responsibility cool so we're seeing that setup so unfortunately guys out there uh guys and gals yeah this is leading to the sequels i'm sorry to say but it is uh, we're, I, we're just gonna have i to mean deal. i he's kind of boxed in it's not like he has much of a choice totally totally but we have so much story to explore and other other stories that can be explored the in, the way that i see it though Mm -hmm. I see him doing for the sequels what he did for the prequels. If Man, it I honestly, so. if it hadn't been for the Clone Wars TV series, yeah, I don't know that I would have had as much. I don't know that I would have enjoyed any aspect really of the prequels. They are still very difficult for me to watch because every time I do go back, I'm reminded mm, these are not great. Yeah, they uh, uh they're they're not, they're not the worst thing I've ever seen, but they've got their issues. But yeah. the Clone Wars makes them better if you're able to mm -hmm. kind of weave it in the way yeah. that uh, these characters act. And and you really do see it in this series, too, in Ahsoka. You can see that they have mm -hmm. they have a lot of their um, their sort of Clone War personalities. And I love yeah, seeing that. they really do. And I love the fact that we got more of a Clone War-style Anakin in the hologram, yep. too. I love that. I, I absolutely love that. And you can tell, too, in that hologram that he, yeah, he is the older version of... In, mm -hmm. in that Clone War scene, and that was the last one that he made for Ahsoka. It was, it. Was, I love the fact that they were able to set that up in a way to where it shows you not only that he cares about Ahsoka so much mm -hmm. because he made all of these, so it adds a little bit more to Anakin like that, but it also also gets to show you a little bit more of Anakin's side as well as Ahsoka and how much she still respects this man. And now, when she mentioned that he had made a bunch more of those videos, mm -hmm. were those the same videos that Ezra was watching in Rebels? I I think so. Yeah, because they had a lot of the train. They, they did show uh, lightsaber techniques and everything from mm -hmm. Anakin during that. So I think so. I think you're right. Those are probably That'd be cool. 
a part of those. And I hope we get a couple more. It'd be nice to see those sprinkled in throughout because I, you know, I, I thought that it would have been totally fine if they left Hayden Christensen out for the rest of the season. But gosh, I just love seeing Hayden Christensen. So do I. Again, so do I. You know, and like you said, you know, the Clone Wars definitely made me change my opinion about the prequels. Yeah, they're not perfect. <clears throat> We've talked about that. And the dialogue is my mm -hmm. main issue with it more than anything else. And well, and the graphics too. the, yeah. the incessant <laughs> amount of green screen and CGI and less practical effects. But I still Guys, this very is much going to enjoy. age perfectly. Don't I worry. <laughs> Just like Jabba the Hutt in A New Hope in that <laughs> cutscene. <laughs> it's going to age perfectly. <laughs> but uh, I really did. Uh, yeah, after seeing the Clone Wars and what Dave Filoni was able to do to flesh these characters out, it mm -hmm. made me appreciate the prequels on a whole nother level. So they oh, yeah. do hold a special place in my heart now because of what he was able to do. So if he's able to, if this is a Herculean effort, if he's going to be able to do this with the sequel trilogies, um, I, I don't see how he gets there just yet. But if he's able to do it, I am all for it. If you are able to improve the sequels, great. But if, if all you can do is just ignore them and move forward, that's fine too. <laughs> you know, I'm fine with either, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, it would be great if those, those movies, um, were improved and, and you know i have a video back in the day and i always thought this would have this would have drastically changed my my view and my feelings towards the sequel trilogy in a way and I, and some people don't like it but i very much liked it and i thought it would have linked the skywalker saga with this damn sequel trilogy that was supposed to be the skywalker saga i really thought that they were going to have you know anakin be you know, Ray be the reincarnation of Anakin Skywalker and it was like her penance hmm. to restore balance to the galaxy as this new Anakin this new chosen one and he had to come back and fix the things that he destroyed kind of a balance in the force type of thing um not bad and and I wonder too if like they were trying they were thinking about that in the first movie in Force Awakens because there was so much in there about like who is this character what are they doing and there was a, like a lot of retread with you know this character and a lot of similarities to Anakin Skywalker hmm. and uh and she was instantly bonded to Leia in that and I was like that's weird like who what stranger would automatically hug a person like that yeah that there's a lot involved? of weird choices made <laughs> there are some choices that they made so, in that film you know going back to what you had mentioned about uh um some of the elements in Ahsoka that if you heard about them you would think at first oh that's fan service but yeah. the way that he deploys them in Ahsoka, it works yeah. like C-3PO tonight that work. Yeah. But some of the elements that had in the sequels was definitely fan service and it right. wasn't deployed the For right fan way. Fan service sakes. Yeah, exactly. So and again, I think it has a lot to do with the person at the helm, the one mm -hmm. creating it, the one directing and writing. How, mm -hmm. They've got all of this. They've got this treasure trove of Star Wars stuff that mm -hmm. they can use, but you have to use it the right way. Yeah, you can't just put it in there for fan service. There's got to be a purpose. Uh, uh, see what I see the, the thing? story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's got to be a purpose and a reason for that to mm -hmm. be in the story. And I think Dave Filoni is great at that. And that's why you have to have people that are passionate about this stuff in yes. charge. Because like Dave Filoni knows the backstory. He knows the history. He he learned from the master himself, George Lucas. He mm -hmm. knows this stuff frontwards and backwards. Uh, like I totally the back agree. of his hand. You know, it's all there and it's all there for him to use and pick and choose to build the story. He's not just putting it in. He's like, I want to I want to write this in so that people see uh, the Jedi training ball. OK, let's let's pop that up on the screen. OK, yeah, that makes sense. He doesn't do that. He's like, well, no. I have to, you, you know, I'm making the story and oh, I can add this into there because that fits into what I'm telling. And it's just brilliantly done. I don't think I could do that any better. And I, I do do a lot of writing and I've, I've written a lot of stories and everything and i don't think i could write a story like ahsoka as well as dave filoni has been able to do it like his writing is out there he could write him he could he could run a master class on how to write an a, a brilliant screenplay because oh man, oh yeah he he is far and beyond impressing me and i've always been impressed with dave filoni but this series in particular is so impressive i'm just Wow, I'm blown away with what he's doing and he's what he's able to bring to the screen with these characters. And as much as you guys hate it, um, Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson actually took Dave Filoni 
under his wing, showed him how to use camera work and everything, showed him the behind the scenes things that he needed to learn in order to do live action. So he, t and he says this a lot. He's said this in interviews. Dave Filoni loves Ryan Johnson for the fact that he took him under his wing to show him all <clears> this <throat> stuff and to get him involved in that. And no matter if you like it or not, this, you know, that led to what we're getting right now. I'm a bit of an outlier. You can, you can grab your pitchforks. You can light your torches. This, this is a I'm lot like the, the last Jedi for me is a lot like book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan. There are certain elements that were really good. That I do yeah. appreciate that Ryan yeah. Johnson did. Um, and I, I kind of wish they hadn't attempted to undo a lot of what he had set up yeah. because I think it was a good direction since they had, so, like, your idea of, you know, having the trilogy tie back into the Skywalker saga, that would have mm -hmm. been nice, but they clearly didn't do that, starting with The Force Awakens. Yeah. So, with Ryan Johnson saying, all right, fine, so since we're not really going to tie it to the Skywalkers, great. She's a nobody. Yeah. Oh. I oh, like okay. that so fact, she, too. I like so that she, she doesn't a have to be related to anybody. No. Mm -hmm. No, anybody can have the Force. The Force, is, it surrounds us. It's, it's with us. It combines Anybody us. can it have access to the force. It you don't have to be galaxy. anyone special. And I'm like, I like that idea. I thought yeah. that was pretty neat. Now, again, there was a lot of other elements in the movie that, yeah, questionable. <laughs> I think I they could have done without all of Cantabite. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, the whole Cantabite <laughs> thing was was crazy. And I take it from me, I love Ryan Johnson. I love a lot of mm -hmm. his movies. Brick, Looper, Looper some of so my good. Favorite. Mm. freaking great and the way that he he uses his effects uh, i love it and the way he uses practical effects was, is amazing yes. too mm -hmm. so ryan johnson i love and he was you know he's this underground director that came up from nothing too and just built this thing and now he's got star wars so i love i love ryan johnson i love what he did with knives out as well and mm -hmm. so it He's a great director, and originally he was supposed to write a Star Wars story that didn't play, take place in the Skywalker saga, and that's what he originally wanted to do. And then when he got in there, they're like, oh, hey, do you want to actually direct Episode Eight? And he's like, uh, okay. So I really wish they would have let him go off in his own direction as Star Wars, let him create new characters, let him make his own story. Oh, that would have been I good. That would have been much better than what we got with Last Jedi. And again, I agree, like, I agree with you, Doug, that I, I did like a lot of elements of Last Jedi because I do very much like Ryan Johnson. Speaking of practical effects, did you know that he actually reused the Yoda puppet? He did use the... Oh, yes, that wasn't that. CG. Yep. I, yeah, I knew it was a puppet. I didn't. Was it the original? I thought the, the original well, they, was... Well, they had to fix it up, but yes. Okay, yeah. yeah there had uh, to be they, a lot of fixing. It, it was old, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did know that it was a puppet, and I very much enjoyed that, too. I was like, thank you. Like, mm -hmm. Yoda shouldn't be CGI. And I know why they had to do that for the prequel trilogy. Well, and the everything. way that he moved, yeah. That made sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I know I like in... the way you move. <laughs> 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 Wasn't it in uh, in Phantom Menace they originally did use a puppet and it looked terrible? Well, they did, yeah, for the the very the premiere and in, in mm -hmm. theaters, yeah, it was a practical puppet that they used for that for all the scenes. And then later on, well, when they did Attack of the Clone, they decided to go all CGI, and then they went back and yeah, as Menace George and does, them. <laughs> yeah, as he does. And I never had a problem with that. I'm like, yeah, go for it. So no, there are certain things that I am glad that he fixes. Like, yeah. um, honestly, I prefer having Ian McKellen as uh, the Emperor in um, mm -hmm. in Episode 5. I think yeah, it makes more too. sense. Totally. Yeah, instead of like a monkey baboon type of thing, lady thing that we got going on. <laughs> yeah, that was so weird. And, and, <laughs> yeah, it was weird. All right, Travis says, I think they also had the original creature creator from the original trilogy. I think I remember I reading so that, too. yeah. Yeah, and if you notice the uh, the guy who d designed Yoda, he looks a lot like Yoda too. <laughs> he used a lot of his own face for the puppet as well, and he used Einstein as well as as for the hair and whatnot. It's really cool nice. that he used. Nice. So, yeah, so there were there were definitely lots of really cool elements in, in Last Jedi. But what we're getting here in Ahsoka is definitely bringing up all the best best elements mm -hmm. of all this stuff. So I very much appreciate it. <clears throat> and yeah, yeah, I can't be mad. I can't be mad at Ryan Johnson. For showing Dave Filoni the ropes because this this is awesome. We're getting the best of Star Wars now, and we're getting it on a weekly basis, which is yeah. fantastic. 
All right, do you have anything else you want to bring up about this? Any final parting things before we go into our review, our our, uh, our, our rating on the Duck Skill? Just one last thing. So going so, back to what we were discussing before about, uh, you know, Ezra's choice of clothing. Yeah. Again, the way that he fought tonight, I think that kind of disputes the ongoing theory I that agree. they are stormtrooper Ooh. dog tags. Now, we did, we did get some clarification that the clone troopers did have id tags yep thanks to attack on show mm -hmm. thanks to attack on show uh but I, I still don't think that that's what that was uh you know under his agreed i don't think so and his character isn't showing that either like he is he's very much mm -hmm. peace and love man he's yeah and chris he's on his way effort. home he's going home chris oh he's totally going home <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah ezra you're, you're going home as in <laughs> He's going on. Another world. He's... <laughs> where did where did Ezra go, mommy? He went out to a farm where he can frolic and play with all the other Jedi. I know. Right? <laughs> he's, go he's he's going to the Ezra farm <laughs> you know, to play around in the fields forever. <laughs> he's gonna love it. But but how cool was it too? Let's like this is my final thought. How cool was it to see three Jedi there in front oh. of the screen again? I'm just like, yes, this is awesome. So great. So great. I man, it's so I'm loving it. Gotta give props to that the actor who plays Ezra Iman Isfandi. I, I'm loving that guy. Like he's doing a great job with Ezra. So I look forward to seeing him again. I wanna see more from him. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm getting invested in this damn character. So uh, yeah, that doesn't mean there's good things that are gonna happen <laughs> with this character. That's uh <laughs> I, I'm getting a very bad feeling, guys. <laughs> No. Are you getting a bad getting feeling attached. about this? <laughs> I'm having attachments. So I'm I'm going to the dark side here. Oh no! But mm -hmm. he's doing a great job. And bad attachments are. Yeah. Are they though? Are <laughs> they? But yeah, they they've got a lot to wrap up next week. I got like Balin, what he's searching for, where he's going, Thrawn getting out of there, the gang trying to find a way to get home as well, if they are successful or not. It's like so much needs to be wrapped up next week. They do. So it's going to be interesting. They do. Uh, just don't know what's going to happen. But anyways. <sighs> Isn't next Tuesday yet? <laughs> I know. Right? Uh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and go into our ratings. On the Doug right. scale, Doug. What, what All right. Like On the Doug scale, uh, where one is the worst, five is average, and ten is the best. I am going to give this episode a solid seven, a seven mm. for part seven. It was good. It had a lot of good parts. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not what I expected, as I keep saying. Um, yeah. But the reason I'm giving it a seven and not like a perfect 10, it just felt, it felt a short and it felt like mm -hmm. a shorter piece of a larger right. picture. It almost felt right. like there was something more and they kind of plucked this out and said here mm -hmm. this will tide you over yeah it was almost like Agreed. watching you know uh whenever they release those here's the first five minutes of the premiere episode that's what this felt like it felt like it was a part of a larger thing because mm -hmm. it didn't feel like they ended an episode it felt like it just stopped yeah and to you me, had so. that complaint last week too so they've been doing this for a couple episodes now too so if it had not been if, if it felt like it had a, a proper start and an end for an episode the way that i imagine a mm -hmm. tv episode should be i get right. the streaming i think i would have rated it a bit higher um mm -hmm. but seven isn't it's still good yeah it's still not negative yeah i don't know like i i uh yeah this this whole series it might would it have been a better experience if we would have gotten it like Stranger Things all released at the same time or like the first part released at once and then the second part released at once. I, well, I, for our I, channels, I, absolutely not. It would be terrible <laughs> for our channel. Yeah, so we, <laughs> we'd we only have two two streams. I, I need the attention. Num, 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 num. Come on. Um, oh, all that, all that stuff. Yeah, so. But... Yeah, I mean, I think that it was definitely designed to be watched all as one piece. And yeah, That's that is definitely hurting this this series when it comes to watching it week to week. And uh, yeah, I can't dispute that with you, Doug. And I can't ex dispute that with Attack on Show. That that does bring down the episode as, as a singular episode, as a solo episode. Mm -hmm. 
It's definitely not as good as some of the ones that we've seen. I'm still yeah. very much enjoying. I'm loving a lot of these scenes. I'm loving how they're oh, utilizing yeah. the characters. I'm having a fun time. I'm here for the ride. The the effects are just amazing. They did not spare expenses with this. No spare. Yeah. <laughs> I did not spare expenses with this. So. And every yeah, Thrawn scene was amazing. <laughs> um, for me, I'm probably going to rate this one. Where am I setting? I'm going to say 7.5. Okay. Out of ten for me, I did enjoy it, and it, it's definitely worth a watch. And once oh. we see next week's episode, I will definitely, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what the whole series will give us. But yeah, it's all good to me. Mm. Oh, you know what? I actually can't wait for that. I'm gonna, I might have to go and rewatch all the episodes like in one huge chunk. I think so. Yeah, I think uh, I'm probably assuming gonna that I have too. time. <laughs> yeah. There's That's... always time for Star Wars stuff. <laughs> always. That's the one thing Ahsoka Tano does not have, is time. Nice time. But we have <laughs> lots of it. You don't need to sleep. So, yeah, that was another great line from Thrawn. Oh, my God. Every line that he has is just perfect. I'm like, oh, good job. Mm. Good job. But if so you guys good. want, if you want, um, we're going to be discussing this a little bit more with uh, Keith and Dave joining on Not Your Status Quo on their, their stream there tomorrow. Uh, are we going at 5.30 or 5 o'clock? Um, 5.30, I think, right? Because don't you have uh, uh, some oh. things to... I can actually... I can come on early tomorrow. Oh. So uh, if, if you guys want to go at 5, I'm totally down. Whatever time right. you guys want. So, okay. yeah, we'll be we'll be doing that tomorrow. So we'll get... I can't wait to hear what Keith and Dave think about this episode. Same. And we get to Same. talk about our theories and everything for the finale. Oh. It's going to be so fun. So... You guys can join us for that, and then next week, we're going to be doing our final watch party. Again, like I said, Attack on Show is going to be joining us, not your status quo. It is going to be epic! It's going to be so oh, much fun yeah. to, to finish up this series with you guys. The season. It's, I don't think this is the end of this series. This no, season, neither do I. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be... I, I've never had Robbie on, so have you guys had Robbie on... You're we have not. Part? No. Um, um, we have never had him on. Us. I love that. So I can't wait to have him on. He's awesome. I, I like a lot of his opinions. I like all of his reviews. So it's going to be fun. He's, he's a friend of the show. He's a friend of Not Your Status Quo. So, yeah, we're just going to have a blast next week. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And that's going to about do it for us here at Fatherly Fandom and Not Your Status Quo. Doug, Thank you so much for joining me. It it wouldn't have been as good without you. I just I love having you guys on here. It's good having Keith. Great having you. I'm just having a blast here. So thanks again. You're awesome, man. Thank you. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. So I'm going to end the stream now. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the channel or subscribe to Not Your Status Quo. Give us a like for this video. Share it with your friends and family. We really want to produce a lot of good content for you guys and produce stuff that just gets you excited for all these fandoms like Star Wars. So thanks again for joining and from our families to yours. Have a good one and may the force be with you. So thanks for joining me today on Fatherly Fandom and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And from our families to yours, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.